Come on. Even by departing, uh -huh. that they might not obey thy voice. Read. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. We're going to touch on that curse and why that curse happened. Remember, he said, all Israel sinned against God. Therefore, the curse is poured upon the Israelites. Come on. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. The oath written in the law of Moses. Read. The servant of God. Because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words which he spake against us. And he confirmed exactly what he said. He said if we broke his commandments, we were going to be cursed as a race of people. Right. And he confirmed it because when you look around at black people, who looks like they're cursed in the earth today? See? But this is how they feel, right? Most black people live here, right? Name one of these stores that's owned by a black person. Maybe, maybe not then. Let's go to a white name. Let's go to Stony Point. Or let's go to, to, to uh, what's a, uh, another place? Let's go uh, deep in Chester, right? In the white neighborhoods. Short name one, short pump. Name one store owned in their neighborhood by a black person. Nah, I can't help you with that, sis. Right. You ain't oh, the silence is deafening. They own stores in your, in your neighborhood, and you don't own nothing in their neighborhood. The that says cursed. That's what that says. Now keep reading. And he has confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judge us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven, under the whole heaven, under all heaven, read, hath not been done, have not been done, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As have been done to the Israelites. The Bible just said, ain't nothing on the earth been done worse than they've been done to these people, the Israelites. Right. Now, what does that look like? We we know we went to slavery, right? Name another reason that went into chattel slavery. Just one. Give me one. Not that? Cool. Give me another race of people where they killed over 22 million of their babies. And I taught to do that in something called Planned Parenthood via abortion. 22 million babies. No other race? How about name another race where their music is teaching them to kill each other, shoot each other, sell dope to each other, call their women bees and hoes, and then they go to prison behind me. Name another race of people that they push that type of music. Peace. Right. And then we can go on and on and on. Ain't nobody been dealt with how the Israelites have been dealt with under the whole heaven. Right. That's how we know we the Jews. Deuteronomy right. 28 and 15. That's right. Now we read that the curse was poured upon them for breaking God's laws. I asked you, were y'all together? You said, yeah, and that's honest. Right, I'm going to deal with you because who are the leaders in the house? The men. You, you agree with that, sis? You don't agree with that, huh? Now, we touching on something because remember, we said we were cursed for breaking God's laws. We got to clean our people up. It's some things that we think in our mind that we apply today that God hates and it's why we suffer as a race of people you fuck? said rightly the men are the leaders sis I know our sisters have been taught we were leaders our sisters were leaders what I, well, let me ask you this sis what do sisters lead who do they lead see how silence is deafening sis you, you can't even tell me what women lead you can't even they lead us but of what it's more, it's, more, it's more than wanting to be a leader. You have to lead something. Right. Men naturally are supposed to lead things. Yes, right. That's why the world, every single one of these stores was built by somebody. Was it a man or a woman? Probably a man. Did a man lead that team or a woman? Yes. More than likely a man. Who the military is led by? You want to go to war? Do most women want to go to war? Right. Who going to lead those things? That's what I'm saying. Leading means... Ultimately, the, the worst part of leading is you might got to die for the people that you're leading. Now, how many women want to die for somebody? What's the matter? Y'all wake up in the middle. Y'all live together? Y'all yeah. wake up in the middle of the night. Somebody, pow, break the glass on the window. You going to wake up and say, hey, go check it out. And then he going to look at you like, sweet, you going to check it out. You going to accept that? I mean, we can go together. Y'all, okay. <laughs> and, and I'm a Caucasian blue-eyed white man. Right, that sounds just as crazy. You know, you know, you know. I'm not saying. Maybe you think that, 
But in reality, somebody, bro, he a big guy. How tall are you? You don't know how tall? He a big guy. You mean to tell me somebody break in the house, you about to go downstairs and try to fend him off with him? That's cool. I've been with my wife 15, and my wife ain't busting a grape in a fruit fight. You know what I'm saying? She might talk. She might talk that talk, just like you talk that talk. But we all know when it's hit the fan, he coming downstairs, and that's good. He posed. To, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go, don't go. Listen. Watch this. Watch this. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. Okay, okay. Read. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes I, which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Bible says our people will be cursed for breaking God's laws. Just like we were trying to show the brother and the sister but our people don't want to hear it. Right? We need solutions to these problems. We're supposed to be going to our churches, to our pastors for these solutions. And we are not getting these solutions. We get a good sermon. You get a feel-good sermon. That's what you get, right? But why are we even out here? Jeremiah chapter 7, and you start at verse... Give me... Start at verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 9. Y'all listen up. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery? Stop. Theft, my brother. My brother right here in the orange, I'm going to talk with you for a second. The Bible says, will you still commit adultery and murder? Are these not problems that go on in the black communities today? These are some of the most prominent problems that go on in the black community today. And I ask you, what is the solution to fix these things? Anybody know? Right, because we've tried religion, right. we've tried economics, right. we've tried uh, unifying with the other nations, right. and all of these test, test, test. All of these things have not worked for the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American man. Right. I was talking to what you got? Yeah, hold that. I was talking with one of the brothers, and I have a chart. Far as with Richmond, five as far as the five most prominent neighborhoods in Richmond. I want you to read this actually. And we're gonna see if church, religion, Christianity, Islam has fixed the murder, adultery, and theft problems in our communities today. I want you to read this. The five most dangerous neighborhoods in Richmond, Virginia. Come on. Neighborhood. Oakwood. Read the number. Violent. One thousand violent crime rates per one hundred thousand. I want y'all to listen to this because I'm just a Negro, right? <laughs> I don't know anything. So we're gonna read you statistics. We're gonna read you numbers. Right. The numbers ain't gonna lie. Read what you got. Violent crime rate per 100,000. Mm -hmm. Neighborhood, Oakwood, 1,508. We're talking about thefts, murders, any type of crime you can think of. And we're just summing it down to these five neighborhoods. Kiri. Neighborhood, Creighton, 1,720. Mosby. 2008. Broad Rock, 2,112. Hillside Court, 2,316. Now, what we're reading to you once again is crime in our neighborhoods. These are overall responses from police. Calls to the neighborhoods for thefts, murders, and nine times out of ten, those murders come from adulteries. Sleeping around with men or women that you're not married to. 
And that is the problem in our communities today. That's right. We have no type of moral compass. And the Bible is what we're supposed to have far as with our morals. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 7. I had to touch on what's wrong first so we can show you what we have to do to fix our problems. We're not going to give you a feel-good message. We're not here for your feelings. We're here to fix the problems in the blacks, Hispanic, Native American communities today. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 9. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery? And swear falsely. And do what? Swear falsely. And burn incense unto Baal. Baal, excuse me. And walk after other gods whom ye not whom ye know not. Stop. And walk after other gods whom ye know not. Y'all just finished celebrating Valentine's Day. Gods who you know not. John chapter four. John chapter 4, ye worship no, ye know not. Give me that. What are you worshiping with Christmas? Thanksgiving? Valentine's Day? Come on. New Year's? Hey. What are you worshiping? What? What is your purpose in worshiping these holidays that America, your oppressors have set up for you? Right. You're doing and following the traditions of a man who hates your guts. Right. Who murder you every single day who lies to you every single day, who oppresses your people and says, hey, we're equal. There's equality in America. Boy, watch this. Read what you got. John chapter four, verse 22. Come on. Ye worship, ye know not what ye know what, excuse me. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of what? Of the Jews. The top of the scripture says, Ye worship which ye know not. Y'all don't know why the hell you celebrating Valentine's Day. I know why, because you want some box. Right? What we gonna deal with? Oh, a cross? We got a cross? I I, I don't I don't see it. But we gonna deal with that. I'm glad matter of fact, we're on that point right now. Ye worship which ye know not. Why do our people walk around? with crosses on our necks. Right. Why do we do that? Because today we're taught that, yeah, Habakkuk, today we're taught that by having a cross is a sign of being favored or blessed by God. But it's the cross which was the weapon used to crucify our Lord and Savior and put him to death. Which was used to murder Jesus, the black Messiah. That's right. We wear them around our necks today as a sign of being blessed. But what does the Bible say about the cross? Read what you got. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. And brother, this is for this is not to bash and be picking on anybody. We're not out here for that. We're here to save our people. Because there's imminent destruction coming to America in the form of what you know as World War III. And God is not letting the unrighteous enter into the kingdom. I'm out here for my brothers and sisters because I will, if it, it's not my will, it's your will, hopefully, for you to be saved from the destruction that's coming. But we have, we have, to, we have to lay all the cards on the table. We have to expose the evil. And we must correct it with the scriptures. Right. That is how we're going to clean up our communities. That is how we're going to clean up our minds. That is how we're going to gather together as a people. That is how we're going to be. That is how we're going to be lifted up on top. All right. But we have to understand the evil that we in and then come out of it. Right. So what is? Let me ask you, brother. I'm gonna deal with you. By the way, my name is Elijah. What's your name, brother? Gavin. Gavin. Gavin? Gary. Gary, okay, Mr. Gary, what's going on, man, my brother? So let me ask you, since we're dealing with the cross, or initially, what were you taught that the cross meant? It's just a symbol. It's just a symbol to uh, stand for what I stand for. Okay. As far as just, just being, being faithful. Just, just being the man of God, and just, just walking the righteous path. Okay.
okay? All right, and initially, I would say majority of us would think the same. But we're going to, let me get that real quick. We're going to show you according to the Bible with the cross, the unk, uh, what's some other things that our people wear today? The crescent moons, all these other things. We're going to teach you what God feels about the cross. Because usually what we'll do is, We'll lay it. In, we'll 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 put it in gold or silver. We'll rock it around our neck, around our wrist, all those things, right? And we'll think that that's what it means. But I'm going to show you what God says it means to Him. Okay? Read what you got. Habakkuk chapter two, verse eighteen. Come on. What profit if the graven image? So there's supposed to be a profit to the image, but God is saying, what is that? What is the profit? What is the benefit of it? Read. That the maker thereof have graven it. What? The molten image. The molten image today is the gold, the silver, the diamonds. We'll in inlay over a cross. We'll inlay diamonds or whatever precious, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, gemstones. You know, because like you said, the initial thought is it's a symbol of me, what I represent, my faith, me being right. That's initially what we think. But God says, what is the real benefit of it? Or what does it really mean? Kiri. And a teacher of lies. A what? Teacher of lies. What is nation? Nation is men leading by example. Oh, my.